This is Gordon Fessick from AntiWindowsCatalog.com, and this is part two of Safeguarding Your Windows 8 Pro PC. We're going to start with basic security settings, and because we're going to actually administer the computer, we will use the administrator account. We'll start with the Windows firewall, and the reason we start with that is it is common folklore that if you leave a Windows PC plugged into the internet, it will guarantee to be infected all by itself within 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't know where they come up with these anymore. That might have been true for, oh, say, Windows 2000, but that was so last decade. By the way, if you're looking for some of the hidden things, the computer's control panel is now in the new ribbon in the file explorer. There it is, control panel. Here we go, Windows Firewall. Let's go straight to the advanced settings just to show that the defaults for Windows 8 Pro are a lot smarter than they used to be. Inbound rules is the big one. I'm going to sort this by profile. Windows, ever since Windows Vista, has had three network profiles. All, which is all networks. Private, which is anything sitting behind a NAT router or your typical home router or domain where it belongs to an Active Directory domain. By default some really basic things are turned on so that just basic networking can work and these things by themselves are not harmful. They're simple things like letting the computer know that a connection failed out going out somewhere or there was a problem with packet sizes. It's not even going to answer a ping. If this computer were plugged in directly to the internet and another computer tried sending an ICMP ping packet, it wouldn't respond to that either. It would just be like a hole. Nothing out there. The only thing that seems to be turned on is one of the built-in little applets. And, well, it isn't running, so no big deal. Let's scroll down all the way to public. This is what's going to make a difference. You're not going to have any of these things turned on for public. Public is you're in a wireless uh, access point for free somewhere, or an internet cafe or something. None of these are turned on by default for public. So the old 20-minute guaranteed to be infected rule, no longer applicable. In fact, it hasn't been applicable since Vista. <laughs> so that's the firewall. Next, let's check Windows Defender. This is not the same Windows Defender that shipped with Vista and later shipped with Windows 7. This Windows Defender is a full-fledged antivirus application. It does, after the fact, antivirus detection. It scans for known viruses. It's more like the Security Essentials antivirus product that was made available for Windows, starting from Windows XP all the way to Windows 7. If you have automatic updates turned on, Windows Defender will automatically grab definition updates from Windows Update. So you don't usually need to mess with this. If you're familiar with Security Essentials, you can use some of its features to turn off scanning in certain places if you want, excluding certain file types. Like you may want to turn off scanning uh, audio and video files if you're a big heavy editor. Otherwise, you can leave these alone. That's basic lockdown. It comes pretty much out of the box locked down. Now let's shift to our regular account because I'm about to go surfing. I am not going to do any of my surfing as the administrator. I'm going to go to my standard account and I'm going to do my surfing from here. Now that we've got the basic lockdown covered, let's go get some typical plugins that a Windows PC will get. In this example, I will install Oracle's Java Apple's QuickTime, Adobe's Adobe Reader application, and it already comes with Adobe Flash out of the box, so we no longer need to go fetch that. So we'll get those three plugins as examples. Anytime that there will be a delay in downloading or a delay in loading like this, I'll fast forward. All right, let's go surfing. Before we start doing any downloading, let's make a folder someplace where the administrator can get to it. In libraries, you have two 
places in each each library you usually have a my documents which is specific to that user and a public documents which any user can view let's make a folder in here you can call it whatever you'd like as long as it's in public that means the other user the administrative user can get to downloads in here now let's start with java Rather than do the direct download, I am going to get the offline package. Where available, get the full packages. Since we're running 64-bit windows here, we're going to get both the 64-bit and the 32-bit uh, files for Java. There we go. Save as, and we'll save the download to our public documents, public downloads. And we'll do this for all of the downloads. Now that we got that, let's go over to Apple. Go grab QuickTime. Apple no longer requires people to put in their email addresses. Thank you, Apple, for being understanding. While that's doing that, let's go to Adobe. Go grab the Adobe PDF Reader. No, we don't want Google Chrome. Sorry, YouTube, I'm not advertising your browser here. Again, save as. I said save as. Any other packages that you'd want to get, now would be the time to go and get them. We're not actually going to install them from here. We need administrator access to install conventional software, even on Windows 8. If I try to install something from here right now, the installer is either going to complain saying, hey, you're not an administrator, you're not going to do this, or it's going to try to install it and then fail to install. Let's just try installing Java, for instance. It's asking me for the password of a, an administrator account. We can do this, by the way. If you know the admin password, you can certainly do the install while you're logged on as a standard user. Since we know the Java installer works for this, we'll just do it for both of the Java installers. Again, I'll fast forward any long delays. That's 64-bit Java, or that's 32-bit Java installed, excuse me. If you want to skip right to the chase, you can also right-click on an application and pick Run as Administrator to launch the installer straight away. This is in case an installer doesn't prompt you right away. You can jump straight into it by right-clicking and pick Run as Administrator. Do this for installation packages mostly. Don't do it for your regular applications. That's 64-bit Java done. Let's see what happens with the QuickTime installer. I'm still logged on as the standard user. If any of these installers want to make any changes, Windows will prompt me first. Just like that. This does also hinge on the installer actually being tested to run as standard users and then prompt for administrative credentials. In case you're wondering, yes, I do have user account control enabled. It's enabled by default, and it will not allow any system level changes without administrator credentials.
This is one of those reasons you might want to right-click and run the installer as an administrator straight away in case you get prompted multiple times. No, thank you. I do have a QuickTime Pro license, but I'm not going to use it here. And finally, Adobe Reader. Oops. This one is prompting me right away. This is one of those strange installers that isn't actually an installer, but the installer goes and grabs everything. I will tell this to not check for updates regularly, but we can change that later in this application's preferences. And Adobe Reader is done. Let's check something for a moment. I wonder about something. We ran that installer and gave it administrative credentials. Is it running as me or is it running as admin? Good, it's actually not running as the admin. You know what? Let's turn all these on. I know they're good. Okay. I'm going to grab one more example. This is an installer that I've had trouble with before. Not to knock these guys for the product. Uvu is okay. Its installer, however, could stand some work. Yeah, they want you to run it right away. No, we're going to save it first. <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to run this particular installer as the standard user. I already know it has trouble doing so. So I am going to switch accounts. Now, Windows 8 Pro has fast user switching, which was introduced in Windows XP back in 2002. If I'm in the middle of doing something as my regular account, as my standard account, and I need to actually do some quick maintenance, I can switch accounts and not lose my place in the other account. And because I saved the installer in public documents, it will be visible as the administrator. If you were to have saved this in my documents as the standard user, the administrator wouldn't be able to see it right away. Every user has their own my documents, my music, my pictures, my videos. But everyone can see the same public documents, public music, public pictures, and public videos. Okay, so here's that setup application that I grabbed before. And just to save it some trouble, I'm going to pick Run as Admin. But because I'm actually logged in as the admin, the regular UAC prompt will just ask me without asking me for my password again. This particular installer is important for me to show because it's one of the typical installers that will try to launch the application as soon as it's finished installing. Oh, hell no. I don't want that toolbar. I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> I know that's how these guys make their money, but it's just asking for headaches. Okay, here's my problem. I don't even have a checkbox I can turn off that says launch right away. So, okay, fine. I'll just launch it. I'll just say finish. It'll open up. That's a new application, so it's saying, hey, do you want this thing to be able to accept inbound connections? Sure, that'll be fine for here, for private networks. Let's do that. I actually use this application regularly, so I understand it enough. But I am not going to run it regularly as the administrator. In fact, I am going to turn off having it launch, go away. 
I don't want to be running this as the administrator anymore. Go away. But now that it's installed, I can switch back to my standard account and use it right away. There we go, right back where we were. I'm not going to show you my information here. What I can tell you is that I have tested this and it does work. So that is how you handle uh, conventional applications on Windows 8 Pro as a standard user. If you get prompted for something that you, are, that you know that you are not trying to install, you can cancel on the UAC prompt. You don't have to give it credentials. More importantly, if you have someone else who's using your PC and they try to install something, they have to ask your permission first. All right, that is basic lockdown and basic uh, conventional application management. See you in part three.